Well, hello everyone. Welcome aboard Flying with Mike. We are currently at Mid-America Airport and we want to welcome you all aboard. Sorry for the lengthy delay. Maintenance has signed off on the maintenance log. We are cleared to fly. So, and we are going to fly from Mid-America Airport on this clear, sunny, hot dog day of August day out there. Uh, but we're going to be flying out of Mid-America too. Hot and muggy. Well, it's pretty much hot and muggy here too, but uh, Jacksonville, uh, Florida. So, so with that, folks, you can see we're sitting on the ramp at Gate 1. Feel free to find a plane, fly along with us. We'd love to have you aboard. We're on VATSIM as we speak. So, climb aboard and let's go fly with Mike. All right, so we're up in the cockpit here. We do have the power on. Um, currently, we have gone through the checklist all the way down to power up. And we've got our lights adjusted except for these, which I'm doing real quick. Hang on a second. The rest of them are set up as we want. So then we'll head over to the... Uh, EFB and let's load the plane up and for that we're gonna bring sim toolkit in uh, bear with me a second here and uh, we are going to hit the load sheet and uh, you can see we're gonna fly out with 14,900 kilograms uh, with 174 peeps about 300 pounds of cargo ish so to speak but anyway you see our payload and zero fuel weight so we're going to make that match over here so first thing we go to total passengers and we'll put in 174 we're going to set then we're going to go to cargo and simply clear it out and then put 300 set okay now Granted, it hasn't distributed it, nor do I expect it to really, it, it will, but I don't expect it to be a drastic spreading. And then for our fuel for the flight today, we're showing a block out of here of 7,901 kilo. So, again, highlight, clear. Try that again, highlight, delete. 70, okay, why aren't you, oh. Got to call the fuel truck first, folks. Once it's blue, then we'll be able to do that. There we go. See, and then 7901. All right, so we'll set that in there. All right, so that gets our fuel set to the proper numbers, passengers to the proper numbers, and cargo. Okay. And then we've already got the external and the chocks put on. We'll go to perf data. I just need a couple of pieces of information now off of that. Uh, zero fuel weight CG is 28.5. Uh, these are for, and I just have these for reference as I go through the... Um, McDo setup, and then we're going to be trimming up 03 for this. All right, we're going to click set. Okay, 57,758, 7902. Okay, we'll take the extra kilo. And 300 looks good to me with everything here. All right. So let's back out of here and come out of here and again you can kind of see we got a smattering of storms and they're way off from st louis so we don't have to worry about that uh so let's uh pull some toolkit out of the way and yeah i've got some new tricks up my sleeve here folks did some work in the uh, downtime while we had the maintenance issue and uh kind of like what's uh, come out of it so uh we'll see how it works out um, however, one issue I do see that I am going to have to work right now. A 
okay that looks better sorry about that folks I didn't catch that it was bumped into the screen too much but anyway uh, so we've got the uh, EFB all taken care of so next up on our checklist uh, we're gonna roll down and get our APU checked shall we so to do that let's go to the upper panel and I did mean to fix that and I didn't I'll work on that for the next whenever we fly this again so we'll do a test okay well got the red light up here in the bell red lights here red light and that's all we're gonna see for that okay alright so then we're gonna hit APU master click 2 which takes us down to the middle panel and we're just waiting for flap open takes a couple seconds all right so come on flap open there it is then we go right back up to the top click start and then once it's fired up we'll turn the APU bleed on okay and it's going through the process right now All right, sorry about that, folks. Had to get a quick dash of coffee into me. Almost up here, you'll see the generator information start coming alive here anytime. And then when it hits 100, we're available and good to go. So we'll go back up top. We're going to turn on the APU lead disengage from the external power and we're going to come back down head over here and we're going to go ahead and get rid of it okay there we go so now we're going to move on and start in with the rest so we're going to start going up the panels here making sure everything's working fine yes captain we are waiting for your instruction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Turn the ground control on on the recorder for the voice recorder. And we're working our way up. Move this to nav. That'll be a line. And then we're looking for on bat. There's a line and on bat. Number two, align. And on bat, I went a little fast. Basically, that's saying we're working with no, if no generators were on. Hang on a second. <clears throat> oh, allergies. Okay, number three. Align and then on back. There it is. Okay, basically that just means if the uh, generators on the engine for some reason go out, we can st we still have navigational abilities with the battery. Okay, so back down to the bottom. The lights are off on the bottom row. Middle row, they recommend auto on the strobes. The other two off, unless you want the wing light on for the inspection, that's up to you. Nav 1 or Nav 2. All that is is just a different bulb in the wingtip, folks. Uh, no significant value other than if nav, if the first light doesn't work, switch to Nav 2. If that works, you're good to go. Okay, we got our APU on. Seatbelts are on. Uh, no smoking is on since we're fueling. And our emergency uh, exit lights are in the armed position. Landing elevation is at auto and basically that's just saying the uh, system will automatically set us up for when we're coming in say for instance we're leaving here it's about 460 feet above uh, sea level Jacksonville is about 30 so it will adjust the pressurization automatically for that new uh, landing elevation which comes from the McDo when we set it up It'll, it actually, the airport data states what the airfield elevation is. <clears throat> All right, again, sorry for clearing my throat there. 
Okay, working our way up. The APU bleed is on. Packs are on. That's what they look like when they're off. Okay, we'll set our temperatures. A little warmer in the back, a little cooler up front. Uh, the gen faults, of course, stay on till the generators on the engines and the engine itself is alive. And now we can turn on the fuel pumps. Turning them all on does not hurt the ones that don't have fuel, which are the center ones right now. Okay, and then finally we got fire tests to do for engine one and engine two. Okay, it's going to look almost identical to the APU except one additional one. So we got the red light there. Two red lights, one in front of the captain, one in front of the first officer. A cam shows the engine fire, as does it right below the master switch below the throttles. Okay, that was a good test. Okay, good, good, and good. All right, so moving on down to the bottom of the next panel, we just go on up to clear everything. Everything looks good. There is a test for cargo. And there it is. Try something here. It's that too should show something and it does. Good deal. to make sure it stays off this time okay moving up we'll uh, cycle through our hot air and our F's uh, selection valve and we've got it set to 12 o'clock everything's good and this is just a radio we don't have much to do with now coming down we're gonna make sure the brake fans off the anti skid brake fans here anti skids here our first off the brake fans off anti skid on Coming down to the pedestal, not very far, we got the McDo's are on, we see the data, we're going to set our frequencies first, uh, yeah, I'm going to go this way. Then I set my favorite one. And by the way, folks, I came very close to flying on PazCon today. I'm going to save that for our next European adventure. Because it was definitely an adventure by the end of the night. 25. Whoops. And if you're not familiar, folks, that is the international distress frequency. And I'm just setting another Unicom here. All right, there we go. So basically, I have VATSIM Unicom. Uh, this is PazCon's guard channel. I don't know if it's significant in the real world or not. I'll be totally honest. Another Unicom channel that's out there. And actually, PazCon uses this one. And then the International Guard channel. Okay. Now, to make sure you're able to broadcast on VATSIM, PazCon, probably the other uh, platforms in X-Plane with X-Pilot or whatever one, make sure the microphone is turned on. In the 767, which is the other aircraft I have from Flight Factor, you got to make sure the volume's on. Okay, and then we're going to come down here, clear out the transponder, and put 2000 in. And we're going to move it to on. And what that'll do... 
if I can find it here real quick, is put mode C up here. If you can see that uh, mode C, it will disappear here in a moment. The standby. Okay, so if you're getting a controller that's being obnoxious and saying, you've got to squawk mode C while on that ground, that's what you got to do, folks. All right? All right, we got rid of uh, X pilot for us. So let's, uh, well, folks, that concludes uh, the basic checks of the aircraft. Uh, let's make sure we didn't miss anything in that checklist. No, TCAS radio one, two, FMC. Yep, we're good. So we're going to move now to the McDo. Now, for the McDo, I'm going to keep that up. Uh, basically, Boeing guys, this is your FMC. McDo 1 and 2, they both are the same right now. To get to this, you go to data, aircraft status, that puts you on the aircraft status page. Now, we need to go to the INIT page. And since I've already loaded the flight plan up, let's go to B L B J A X O. And it's filling it all in for us. We're flight number MAC. Uh, zero, five, seven, two. All right, we'll get our winds. Okay, return. And then we have to initialize the IRS. So we do that. And no, folks, we're not initializing any governmental agencies. Uh, come down here to align on ref. Confirm the alignment, and there it goes. It is now finishing that up. What's this? The aircraft is now refueling, as I see. Kind of curious. Oh, the APU is running. That's why we're down already. Okay, so we'll return. Now I am going to go check the route. Actually, let's go ahead. We're going to follow it here. So we're going to go uh, from here. We'll check the cost index. We'll check the altitude. Okay, both are good. Then we're going to hit this. Let's do a request. And let me check my numbers. That looks pretty good. Let's, uh... Check 57758.7.9. Hey, word numbers are good. Alright, and the GPS is now aligned. Alright, so we're clear that out now we're going to go to the uh, uh, earth page and what we're going to work out here we'll check the route here momentarily so let me pull that away so it's not a distraction and we're going to bring up um, hang on a second going to bring into here top cat okay top cat is basically just a little utility you can get uh, just type in uh, either professional flight planner or top cat um, and it's going to take you to the website where they're at now these are pay pay sites as you can see it's licensed to me down here uh, the database works off of nav data, and you can actually go into what's called an ACARS mode. We're not going to use that today, mainly because you're not going to, it won't show up for you. Well, you know what? I am going to take a look here and see if it will. Hang on a second. Oops. It does not appear to be doing anything. Okay, so that's what I was afraid of. 
So we're going to just do a quick update of the weather. I've got to figure out why it doesn't show the interim pages. Now the winds have shifted around to 260 at 5. It's only a 3 knot tailwind. We're going to go with it. So we're going to stay on 1 4 left. Going to update the page. Take off normal. And we're going to do a compute here. And it's doing that right now. There it is. Okay, so if we go with a flex of 63, we'll only have 68 feet of runway left. Quite fun. If you're at Mid-America, I've seen them eat up some runway before, but never leave with that little bit left. Um, <laughs> how tempting that is. Um, let me check one other program real quick. What was it calling? Okay, so it was calling to go for it. All right, folks. Well, um, I think we're going to uh, going to go for it. See how the airplane performs with a flex of sixty three degrees. Um, v one will be one forty seven. Rotate to one forty seven. Uh, v two one fifty one, and the margin of runway we'll have remaining, folks, sixty eight feet. Six eight feet. So let's plug it in. Shall we? Seven. Four, seven. One, five, one. Die type. Okay, so flaps two slash trim. Up. And this is why it's nice to have a scratch pad. Zero three. And that is for our horizontal stabilizer in the back to set it. And of course, yeah, we're checking our data. 63, and it's going to say it again. Okay, now we will go with our default here. Now I know yesterday I showed you a website we can go to that would, that black box prepared, but it's mainly Europe. Most of the uh, airports the Airbus fly in in the U.S. are not contained over there, which is fine. You know, we'll go with default information. But uh, should he ever get inclined to include airports over here? Now, I think JFK's included maybe Atlanta. Um, I haven't ever checked, to be honest. But I do know Billings, and I want to say Denver for sure, but I could be wrong. All right, it's fun. I was watching my uh, stream and thought my why my mouse wasn't coming over. <laughs> All right, so we've got the uh, McDo and our transition altitude is obviously 18,000. So now what we're going to do is go to F plan. Now we are going to depart runway 14 left. There is no departure forms. So we are direct Centralia. Okay, and we won't be able to get rid of the discontinuity. I'm pretty sure of it. Oh, we did. Oh. I'm always surprised when things like that happen. All right, so then let's move our way down. Oh, wait, let's do it the right way. A second, folks. F plan. Let's march our way through checking our route all the way down to our arrival point. And while I'm thinking about it, get rid of that okay so we are planned ENL that's Centralia to Nashville so what we'll do is just step our way through it And we're at Jacksonville now. All right, so 
Uh, some tool kit back here. Actually, not that one. Okay, let me uh, resize that real quick so it fits better. There we go. And what we're going to do is take a look at our arrival at the same time. Okay, so we're going to Jacksonville. Pull that away. According to our flight plan, Ohida, Hidi, is what we're going to be using from Duchi. Okay, so what we do is go to Jacks, click Arrival. Now we're planning runway 14 ILS. Okay. Let's get that up here as well. Okay, we're good. All right, so we're going to one more time step through it real quick. Basically looking for discontinuities like that one. Okay, so let's uh, go back to Ojeda. So it's Ojeda to or Duchi. To uh, actually, it should have. Let's go ahead and clear out. That's interesting. It's missing Iltac. Form B. Eight to twenty five and insert. Okay, this is to ten thousand. Eda has a restriction on it from 7,000 to 11,000. It's right here. And 230 knots. So that's showing up properly. And uh, oh, there's Otar. Right there. And that has a restriction on it of 3,000 at 210. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now we switch over to the ILS. So there's OTAR. Kipple. The OTAR to Sonya, right on it. All right, folks, that all looks good. Pull this back. And for now, kill that. Switch over to Mid-America. There are no stars or anything, but folks, real quick... 128.7 is our ATIS. Uh, ACARs we don't have to worry about here. Mid-America, you can see the frequencies across the top. We are located right there. And we're going to come out, taxi, come out Kilo 4, down Kilo to Kilo 1, and take off. Okay, so that takes care of our departure brief as well. All right, so we have... The uh, FMC, or McDo, as it's called in the uh, Airbus world, checked. 
ready to go. Um, all discontinuities removed. Arrival, departure and arrival SIDs and STARS have been checked and input. Okay. Now, let's uh, do this. Lastly, we have the flight control unit checked. That's right here in the middle. Okay, first thing, we got to get our METAR. I see our stream ought to be doing really good now. Hang on a second. I'm just finishing up something I was also working on during the uh, maintenance delay. All right. So, all right. So now back to guitar. Uh, Q and A chair is two nine nine nine. As you can see, it's setting on both sides. Okay. Then we're going to make sure the flight director's on, the LS is off. I'm going to go ahead and turn these on, on both. LS and FD is on. Constraints are on. Rain, uh, nav is set to arc. Range is set to 20. Basically, that's how the screen will look. This is it in plan where we were stepping through. This is how it looks in ARC. These are for when you're on the ILS and such. All right. Moving over, we're going to make sure speed and heading are in managed. That means they have the dots. The altitude shows that, but we got to set for 36. Correction, 37, I believe it is. Yes, 37. Okay, and the dot is there. And that, folks, is all we need to do. And I'll go ahead and turn constraints on over here, too. We are set and ready to go. So we'll come back, start closing everything up. Just want to get my flight started over at the folks at Mac Air. Verifying that I am online. I am. A couple of us up and flying. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so we got Mac Air confirmed. And get rid of charts. So, and again, there you go, folks. You can see how the cockpit should look when we're ready to get out of here. Now, checklist continuing. Uh, we need to get over to the EFB. Go to cargo. Let's remove our loaders. And that closes the doors. I'm going to go ahead and close the door. the fuel truck. I'm going to go ahead and pull the chocks. And we're going to tell them let's first get the pushback tug coming. Cockpit, please show me where you want to go. Second, I want to go uh, about right there. Let's try that again, shall we? Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. All right, now looking outside. Oh, the jetway is still here. Pull that away here momentarily. Okay, and the tug should be on its way. There he comes. 
go ahead and get our beacons on. Tow vehicle is on its way and path is set. VA is, uh, ACAR system is started. We are ready to go flying with Mike. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Go ahead and connect. Okay, parking brake is down here. We'll release it. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Okay, we're going to clear a little bit of the uh, area here first. Starting up the Airbus, folks, is real simple. All we got to do is turn the mode selector to start, and then the master switch on. Slides are armed and everything looks good here. Okay, we're out. So what we'll do, like I said, we move the selector to start. Just watch it spool up. Engine is available. Complete. That's parking brake. Okay, get that parking brake right now. And we're going to go ahead and start number one. And just uh, a side note for everyone, we're out uh, about 15 minutes early. So, if you weren't there two hours early, so sad, so sorry, but we're gone. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. And engine number one is all the way spooled up. There's our tug. And we'll wait to continue the checklist until we see him. And just so you know, folks, right there, that red thing, which is very hard to see, that's the flag and pin that we are free and clear to taxi. Okay, so finishing up the start checks, all we got to do is move the mode select switch back to norm. So back down here, back to norm. 
up to the top panel, turn the APU bleed off, packs one and two are on, then we turn the master switch off for the APU. Okay, back down to the center. Uh, so we'll get the brake fan. That's right here. Auto brakes will put on max. That is equivalent to RTO in the Boeing world. We're here on the weather radar. We'll go to today. Uh, we'll also arm the spoilers. S reset the speed. Well, we'll do that a second time. Um, set our flaps to two. Transponder to TA. And then we are going to do a check of our uh, all of our surfaces. So we're going to go left, make sure it centers, go right. I like to do it a couple of times. Then we're going to go up with the elevator, down with the elevator, up with the elevator. You guessed it, down and center. There's the rudder. Then let's do a freedom of movement. Now you can do this while taxiing, folks. All you have to do to be able to check the rudder, this switch right, this little push right here in the middle of the uh, uh, rudder tell uh, teller, push it, it'll allow you to check your rudders while you're taxing and it won't affect your nose wheel steering. Okay, now we got to set our trim. Stay on that one here. Actually, I like pulling it out so I can make sure. Up three. There's up three. And then one more time, reset to make sure, and now we're ready to taxi, folks. Okay, and off we go, folks, for runway 14 left. And this post right here, folks, if you keep that pretty much or just to the left of it, you're right on the center line. Okay, and we don't have any center or anything up here. I got into somebody wanted to try to start a little radio fight yesterday saying I should be the one reaching out to the controller. And I disagreed with them. So, but I have no controllers up, so sorry. Leave me alone now. That's why sometimes I get a little grumpy about controllers in Europe. Same grumpiness towards uh, Los Angeles and uh, Oakland centers and a couple of others in the country. I'm on here too to have fun, not just them. I think they sometimes forget that. All right, so during our taxi, turn that off. We have to do um, a takeoff config check. All that's going to do is make sure all the systems are in takeoff mode. 
this is blue light right here. Okay, so we push the takeoff config switch, and everything we already knew was green, so we're green and good to go. Air 572 at Scott Mid America Airport will be departing runway 14 left taxing on taxiway Kilo. And all I've done is pulled the lights out for the takeoff, but they are, we are not going to be lighting them up till we're on. And we'll go ahead and get the wind lights on. I have my cell phone right in front of me, folks, and I just got told I have eight notifications from Facebook. Ah, we'll have to check those out later. was a lot of hubbub at the airport yesterday. I can't wait to see how it all went, but uh, it will uh, be interesting to see how my next uh, shift at the firehouse goes. Scott, Mid-America traffic, uh, Mac Air 572 departing runway 14 left. All right, final checks. T-A-R-A. -A. I'm gonna be using as much of this beastly runway as I can. Now, the reason the strobes are in auto, basically, should you forget to turn them on going on the runway, which does happen, folks, Approaching one, four, left. they turn on when your gears ex strut extends when you take off, so they'll be on. And as I've said a lot of times, folks, this down a little. There we go. If you're in instrument conditions in clouds and those strobes are upsetting you, making it difficult to, you know, On because runway, of the flashing one, out there, four, turn them off. If anyone's seeing you in the clouds because of those, they're way too close. Think about that. All right, so here we go, folks. Lined up on the runway, landing lights coming on. In this case, we'll call them takeoff lights. And uh, here we go. And we're in flex. Airspeed's alive. Try our best to keep her on the center line. 80 knots. It's not close. V1, V2.
Okay, I am going to go ahead and give her over to the autopilot. I turned a little early. It did not like that. Okay, we can go to flap one. And let's go ahead and yank up the slats, folks. Okay, let's finish up the uh, takeoff checklist, shall we, with the after takeoff. All right, so. Flaps are up. Let's get on the spoilers, get them down. Actually, unarmed. Is that a word? Uh, for what we're trying to do here. And on is off. Brakes are off and transponders T-A-R-A. -A. Yes, it will say T-A the whole time. It's a bug. And that's it, folks. We are on our way to Jacksonville. Hope you enjoy the flight, folks. We're cleaned up and heading that way. Now, some of you are going, well, uh, uh, Captain, you forgot your lights. They're already turned off inside the, the wheel wells. So we, we can just turn the switches off at 10,000. Obviously, the ones that are still extended, they stay extended till we t one click down, turns them off, second click re retracts them back into the wing. And I'm going to go ahead and push us out a little bit on our ranges. And now that we're above 95, I'm going to go ahead and turn off our lights. 10,000 feet. All right, there we go, folks. Uh, Centralia is right up ahead, as you can tell here. About 15 miles to go, and we'll be going direct Nashville. There we'll join the Juliet 45, head that down to Macon, and then we'll start our descent either right before Macon or right after for Jacksonville. Now, if you look up here, folks, like I just did, and don't see that dot, that means you're not in a managed climb. So just make sure the arrow's pointing up when you click on it, and that will put you into the climb. Conversely, when we're ready to descend, it'll look like this, and we'll push it. Just left-click it. All right, so, well, folks, we're on our way. Hope you all are enjoying. If you are, click follow. We sure would love to have you aboard. But I'm going to go ahead and kick some music off in the background so we can all relax. Hope you all enjoy the flight. Uh, I'll be here for the two hours or the hour and a half that we have down to Jacksonville.
And here comes Centralia. All right, folks, so as we've heard, 18,000 feet means we go standard on the altimeter. Okay, and away we go. We'll keep the uh, seatbelt signs on until we reach uh, cruise altitude. Right now, looking at Simaware, I'm not seeing much in the way of weather. Let me see if I can bring that up for us. Okay, and we're the one up here. We've got Atlanta approach up, but uh, no centers as of yet. Destination is down around here, Jacksonville. So, not a lot of traffic. What do you expect? It's uh, daytime here in the U.S. where most people are at work. Unlike, oh, excuse me for yawning. Unlike our European counterparts, who have ended their work days and are at home enjoying the flight zoom. So that's why there's so much traffic over there this time of the day for the U.S. folks. So we're just uh, cruising along here, folks. Uh, centers that we could come upon are uh, uh, Kansas City, uh, maybe Memphis, maybe Atlanta, and Jacksonville. So, but anyway, folks, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. Hope uh, you all are having a great Wednesday. It's hump day. Or as the 
Geico, I think it's Geico, or one of the insurance commercials goes, Mike, 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 let's go flying with Mike, 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 Mike. Got about an hour and so 17 or so minutes to go, folks. So relax, enjoy. That's what I'm doing here is simply relaxing. And uh, we'll get back into the flow of things at work tomorrow for 24 hours and then out for hopefully two. So let's enjoy the ride on up to 37,000. to say uh, welcome to the chat area hope you're enjoying the uh, chat here and uh, hope you have a great Wednesday or if by chance you're in the Far East pushing into Thursday Okay, so we're through fly level 280. Uh, still really no checks to do, but we're going to go ahead since we're just past the top of the hour. Let's do our system checks and get our fuel tanks in balance here, shall we? Uh, so what a system check involves is basically we go through all of our different system switches or buttons here and make sure everything's in the green. So we just click all. So the first one up is engine. I'll blow it up here so you all can see it a little better. Um, everything's green. Vibrations all look good. And we'll click all again. Our bleed air, again, all's green. Valves look in the right positions. And again, our cabin pressurization looks good. 
Nothing red, nothing yellow or anything like that. The electrical system just shows how it's distributed from the engines across both the DC and the uh, AC uh, uh, direct current and alternating current electrical buses. Okay, next up is the hydro... Oop. Nope, helps to click the right one. Next up is hydraulics. Now, keep in mind green, blue, yellow. Just keep that in the back of your mind. We'll uh, show you something here in a minute. But everything here also is in the green. Pressure-wise, everything looks green. Now, this is the one we I keep hitting clear. Fuel. You can see we're out of balance here. So what we'll do is we'll come up to the overhead panel. Now to get this into balance, we first turn on the cross feed. Saw the valve move right here. So now both wing, both wing fuel tanks are feeding the whole fuel system for both engines. But what we're gonna do to get these in balance is turn off fuel pumps for the left wing. So now the right wing is fueling both engines. And that's how we're able to get things into balance. It doesn't take long. Uh, so let's drop down. And we're going to click all. APU shouldn't show a thing. It's off. Here's our cabin display. 23 degrees and 77 degrees Fahrenheit back here, even though it says 25 degrees Celsius. Doors are armed and the slides are armed. Got plenty of oxygen for the cockpit. Wheels are up. All right, remember how I told you to remember that green, blue, and yellow? GBY, green, blue, yellow. Surface-wise, this will tell you what hydraulic systems are powering each component. So for instance, for the left aileron, it's the blue and the green. Right side, green and the blue, same one. Um, rudder, all of them. However, elevator, blue and green on the left side, yellow and blue on the right side. The goal here is so that we don't run into another disaster like we had, uh, good Lord, 30 years ago in Sioux City, where a DC-10 blew up, the middle engine blue took out all three hydraulic systems completely. No hydraulics whatsoever on the plane. Pilots were able to get it to Sioux City Granted, they weren't able to land it, although they were close to it. Um, and uh, by using the engines to control it. So, but anyway, this is what that... Remember how I told you green, blue, yellow? That's why I was telling you this. So. Sash is a welcome to the stream. We hope you're enjoying the day. Uh, hot girl from Cali, also welcome aboard. Hope y'all are having a great Wednesday. And then finally, well, that's all of them. Let's get back up to fuel here. Oh, I did it wrong again. Hang on a second. I need to be able to see. I think I went too long. I sure. Oh no, we're getting close. So we're just getting the wing tanks in balance here. But again, welcome both of you to the stream. Um, any questions, any comments, feel free. Put them in the uh, chat room, so long as they're uh, respectful of everybody out there. Okay, we are almost balanced. And again, remember I said we're just now running both engines off the uh, right side. We're about to come back into normal operations here with our fuel. Okay, so we'll turn our right side back on. So, and then the cross feed off. And now we're back in 
to our normal flow where the right right side powers number two engine, left side's uh, fueling number one. So we get power there. All right. Then, oh, not bad. Let's go down to status real quick. Everything's normal. Do a recall, clear, and we're back to here. Everything, and this gives you a quick synopsis of how we're doing system-wise on the plane. You get a lot of information from here. Landing elevation is expected to be 32 feet. So, as you remember in the pre-flight, I was telling you that we switched to auto that switch, so the data from the FMC feeds that, letting it know what it's going to be landing at. Cabin pressures, cabin altitude, and so forth. All right, so let us continue our way on down to Jacksonville. And let's clear up here. And we'll put you on F plan. You on puff. A little different than I liked most. We're still climbing out, folks. Once we pass the inverted hockey stick here, we'll be atop a climb. And probably around. Uh, 55 or so miles out of Nashville. And if my geography is correct, that big lake there to the uh, left of the plain is uh, Kentucky Lake and uh, Barkley. Barkley? Yeah, Lake Barkley. Uh, pretty neat lakes there in Kentucky, Tennessee area. Uh, Fort Campbell is not far away. My daughter went to Murray University. Not many are going to know it outside of the Midwest, but uh, it's a really nice university. But there we are, leveling off into top of climb. Okay, let's uh, get those seatbelts and electronic signs off so people can play with their toys back there. there we go, everything's off. And folks, if you're interested, we are on VATSIM. If you'd like to fly along, be uh, up in the skies with us. Uh, you just saw a link go by. DJ Coolboy, welcome aboard. Hey, it's human. <laughs> uh, so, we are on our way to Jacksonville. Feel free to fly along if you like, or just sit back, relax, enjoy the music, however you uh, enjoy flying. We got pretzel rocks running with Epic uh, Station that they have there of uh, non-copyrighted material. <laughs> it's a human. <laughs> I hope you're having a great uh, Wednesday there, uh, DJ Coolboy.
Okay, and it looks like we still only have an approach up in front of us for Atlanta, which we won't have to talk to. Uh, we'll see how the trip goes, if Jacksonville comes alive or not. But my goal is today to try to fly a second flight after this. Uh, we'll see how time goes. We got a late jump. Uh, wife had a couple of phone calls, uh, in her part of the office here that we stream out of. She's in the other half. The one that's actually making real money today. A lot of money. Um, but, um, so she kind of gets to dictate when we launch. So we had a maintenance delay while she had to get through her calls. So. But we are on our way now. And we'll just keep the music rolling, folks, so uh, uh, y'all can relax as well. At the uh, airline Allegiant is a, a low-cost carrier over here in the States. <coughs> oh, folks, my apologies for coughing in your ear like that. Um, they operate a little differently than you might think for most uh, airlines. Meaning, if you look like American, and I, I really don't want to speak out of turn with you or European airlines because I'm not familiar with them, but I would assume like a Lufthansa or Air France operate the same way as American and Delta and the big ones over here. Well, Allegiant's a little different. They're primarily more vacation based airline. They're not out for the businessmen. Meaning, while they fly to a lot of those same airports, Delta United and all fly to, uh, if they were over in Europe, equivalent to where Lufthansa, Air France, British Airways would fly to, they only fly maybe once or twice a week. Except for the really, really super hot vacation destinations out of where they're flying to and from. Again, they fly from a hub like Jacksonville or like Destin. Journey in, what's up? Welcome aboard. Hope Wednesday's treating you well. And fly out to say Mid-America Airport. Now they may fly to another destination but, and then fly back to Mid-America to fly back to Destin. So you get the point. They stay pretty much point from hub to an airport back to the same hub. Maybe once or twice a week, more or less it's a hot run. And then when that place gets kind of um, slow, they go into a hiatus with it. They just stop flying to it so they don't lose money because they're already very low cost. Some of these routes are only like 30, 40 bucks. So that's why Allegiant, as best as I understand their business model, and then there's a whole lot of other chunks to it, how they operate. So, and they've actually done pretty well. Now, Spirit, on the other hand, and again, I'm probably speaking way out of turn here, but I don't think they fly the same way Allegiant does. I think they fly more of the, the same, you know, spoken centered, but they don't slow places down like Allegiant does or just turn them off until the next year or the next travel season. Oddly enough, going into uh, Arizona being so hot right now, they curtail the distances on their routes because they're not going to be able to get a two engine aircraft on time every day. Awesome. Enjoy. Hopefully we're not the reason you're going to sleep. <laughs> Man, that would really make me uh, wonder about my content. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I appreciate you, man, uh, watching the stream. <laughs> uh, appreciate it, though. Any any time you can watch us, we try to be on here on our days off. So, but anyway, that's what Allegiance all about. And, you know... 
for good or bad, I mean, we who work at Mid-America Airport dealing with them, we kind of get a little chip on our shoulders about them because of some things we see with them. But, hey, it's an airline, folks. It's like most of the other ones out there, they, they got good and bad. But this one, not too bad. I mean, hey, they're still in business and still giving us jobs at Mid-America. So, but we've crossed over Nashville, folks, and pushing now for Atlanta. Actually, we're right over Nashville, it looks like. Although I can't see the airport. It should be right below us. Oh, well, the oh, there's a little sliver of it right there as the cloud covers it. But we're starting to push into the Smoky Mountains here. Time here is one uh 124 central u.s time and i'm gathering it's at least seven eight nine o'clock over there in europe if not further if you're further on into the to the world there but here come the smoky mountains up ahead of us and the highest ones, I think, are around 7,000-ish feet. Um, but, you know, they're still really pretty to look at when you're out there driving around in them. hour difference that puts you probably well, if I'm not mistaken you're somewhere around Hong Kong or something like that all right so now the reason the Smoky Mountains get their name Smoky Indonesia. That's just across the little ocean there. <laughs> uh, my dad, actually, uh, back in the mid-70s, uh, uh, did about, I forget, was it a year? Nine months, a year in uh, Jakarta there with the Air Force. Went in, I'm not sure if he's with the embassy or what he was with, but, uh, yeah, he went over to Indonesia for about anywhere from six months to a year while we stayed in Charleston, South Carolina. All right, but how the Smoky Mountains get their name is a long time ago. Yes, sir. Uh, the Smoky Mountains... Uh, you more about another month or so well it could be now too when the fog starts really showing up in the valleys it's where they get the term smoky mountains so it's not like they're always on fire folks but they are beautiful in the fall just like the northeast just i mean when the colors turn on the trees it is absolutely gorgeous there can remember many a run with the truck enjoying that with the Smokies. Yeah, that was a long, I was about 10 years old, I think, when that happened. So, yeah, long time ago. Yeah, old fart here. <laughs> Land with the dog, yeah. Ours is sleeping. 
about 90% of his life, it seems like. life the dogs lead. Some do, I will admit. Some do. But for the most part, most dogs, rough life. <laughs> 95 percent of the time. <laughs> oh. Right now, let's see, what are we cooking at here? Uh, kind of keep it as is right now. Well, we're uh, moving about 453 uh, knots across the ground, so we're not doing too bad. Switch views here. Is that not showing? No, that's why. Give you an idea. We're about oh on Sim Toolkit. Oh, we're right across the Tennessee Chattanooga area up here, pushing down towards Atlanta right here, and then on down. This view, why don't we just set this right there? Again, that little cluster uh, just ahead of us, that's Atlanta, as you would expect. One of the busiest, if not busiest, airports in the world. Definitely in the country. We got about 46 minutes to go, so let's get into the cockpit here. And bear with me a second. We're gonna pull some toolkit up where I'd like to keep it here if we need it. Okay, let me uh, pull up our charts going to get into the uh, arrival brief here, folks. Pretty much everything is programmed over here, but we're going to go through it one more time. All right, so for the arrival, we're coming in on the OH. Odia 1 from Ducci. Ducci, we got to be between 28,000 and 25,000. 
Okay, up here at the top, you'll see the ATIS for Jacksonville, as well as the airfield elevation. Little discrepancy there, but we're only talking three to four feet. Um, so for runway 14, this talks from Kipple. So, and then from Form B. So we're going to go Duchy to Form B. And here we got to be at between 10 and 13,000. Okay. Then we're going to track to Kipple. Uh, passing Odia. Bear with me a second here. All right, so from o Odia to Kipple, there we got to be between 7,000 and 11,000. Now, here's where this map gets a little tricky. From Kipple, we're going to Maka. There will be a 230, between 5 and 6,000. To Nam Nampi, again at 230. Wait a minute, correction. Otar, Ortar, 210 and 3,000. See what I mean? How it gets a little confusing here. And then here's our runway we're landing on. Now it is the shorter of the two. However, we have an ILS approach for it. Uh, currently, I'll put that in the chat since I, oh, you know what? Why I haven't seen it. Bear with me a second. Okay. All right, uh, but we'll go ahead and pull it up now. Okay, so as you can see, now the winds are 080 at 3, 10 miles visibility, and so forth. Uh, 310 or 3010 for our altimeter at this point. That'll probably change a little bit by the time we get there. And potentially thunderstorms in the area. So we'll kind of really begin paying attention to weather and all as we're traveling in. Get these distractions out of the way. There we go. Um, and then from O Ortar, we go to Sonia to Kuyer, and then right on in. Again, our frequency bar is across the top. Now we're going to be tuning in or looking to make sure 110.5 is set up in our nav radios on with an approach course of 137. Sonia will need to be at 1,628 feet, and uh, the decision altitude is 227, which happens to be 200 feet above ground level. This is the MSL, this is the AGL. So when you look at it in the McDo, top one's MDA, bottom one's decision altitude, they're the same, folks, height and altitude. Here's our missed approach, pretty simple, straight out to Craig VOR, and we're going to hold, climbing to 3,000 feet. Again, transition is 18,000. Visually, this is how we're approaching the runway. Runway is right here. And then vertically, how we're coming in, OTAR. 2,000? I thought I said 3,000. Yeah, we'll be uh, OTAR at 3,000 and 210. So we'll be actually coming in at, at or above 2,000 feet, descending to 1,600 feet to grab the ILS into the airfield. Now I'm zooming this in so you can read this. This chart confuses a lot of people. Our approach speed's going to be right in this area right here, 120 to 150. We'll get the exact numbers, but these are the uh, descent feet per minutes to maintain a three degree glide slope in 
if you're not on autopilot. Right here is our uh, visual of how the mist approach looks. Straight ahead to 3000, direct Craig, 114.5. Now we have a Malzer light system for the approach system with a Pappy on the uh, left hand side. And our minimum's 227 at a half mile. So pretty simple, straightforward approach, not a lot of complicity to it. So hopefully uh, we bring it in like that. Uh, speaking of performance, let's uh, switch gears here. Hang on a second. Okay, let me bring Topcat into the fray here. Great program for both takeoff and landing, folks. So, uh, one of the best things I ever bought. It helps me out, especially now that our one Airbus site that used to give us a lot of data is no longer. We have this still to give us as best we can. So we're going to go to the landing. Make sure we're on the right runway, 1-4 left. Again, 7,700 feet long, 137 degrees for the heading. I'm gonna click update. Okay, so you can see the winds, 0803. It gives us a headwind of two, two knots and a crosswind of three knots. Temperature of a balmy 31 degrees Celsius. Uh, wish it would give us the Fahrenheit translation, but it doesn't. Uh, and we'll be looking for 3010 for our altimeter. Uh, runway should be dry. And we're going to go ahead and set it for an auto land medium break. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn the engine on just in case we do have third. Uh, see you later there, Journey In. We do appreciate you. Understand how late it is there in Indonesia. You have a great night or great day tomorrow. All right, so we complete and our reference speed is 131 approach 136. So if we close out, go back to our chart, we'll see. As long as we maintain about a 700 foot a minute descent, a little more to about between 700 and 750, we'll be bringing it in around three degrees. So that's kind of how you lose this little table. And it also gives you how long from 13 and a half miles out. Oh. Sonia to missed approach. So as you're coming in, you'll start the clock at Sonia and your missed approach time is anywhere from 224 to two minutes. So at that point, if you don't see the runway or at the altitude of 227, you gotta go around folks. That's real world. We all know how the sim is. All right, so. right now 146 miles to top of descent now this activate approach phase when you turn that on folks that slows the airplane to your F speed which means you're gonna drag that all the way in so what I what's recommended is you first maintain your speed here so you would disengage from manage speed control and set it at like 240 and take it in and i wouldn't do this folks until we get to otar or coming into otar 
so we'll be uh, respectful of that for now. We're not going to be using it real quick. One thing I do want to do over here is switch into weather mode. You can see we're starting to get a pretty good line of storms here. So, you know, we'll deal with them as we uh, get south of Atlanta. Right now, we should be over Atlanta. Web gear, see you lurking about out there. Welcome aboard. Hope you're enjoying the Wednesday. Good old hump day. You missed it yesterday. I thought it was Monday. Gotta love 24 hour shifts. You really mess with your idea of times. So, but I hope you have a great Wednesday. We're getting about 140 miles away from our top of descent into Jacksonville, Florida. And we are right now over top Atlanta approach. Uh, we should be... Oh, I know it's before Macon, I believe, is our top of descent. If not, obviously, between Macon and Ducci. So, but folks, we're working our way down that way. To the Sunshine State, as they call it here in the U.S. And folks, if you like flying on VATSIM and looking always for... Um, tr uh, controllers right below us usually is stacked pretty decently with controllers in Atlanta at least center usually if not approach or lower as well so this is one of the and they actually do a pretty good job I will you know I've flown in there a couple times um, I really you know they really do do a good job And Sassism, welcome aboard. Hope you're uh, enjoying the uh, stream as well. And your uh, Wednesday or Thursday is going well for you. And welcome back, hot girl from Cali. See you out there lurking in the uh, chat area. Hope we're uh, giving you uh, a good stream for today.
Okay, I actually kind of like this song. That was pretty, uh, like, add that to my playlist here. Okay, just waiting on a couple things here. All right, so Macon's coming up. Sure, I didn't miss anything. It's like a out 87 miles to our top of descent which puts us at about 212 miles out we'll begin our descent here about uh, five to ten minutes or so maybe 15 at the most That's a pretty interesting song here. Shepherd of the Galaxy by Big Giant Circles. Eh, definitely glad I added that to my uh, um, Spotify account. laptop is running slow today. Alrighty, so... Alrighty. Well, top of descent is now showing on the nav display, folks. So we plan about a. Oh, should be on the ground in about 40 or so minutes.
bring up some volume here. And folks, if that's too loud, too soft, let me know. I can adjust that here with no trouble. Okay, but we are going to get in now. As you can see, it's asking us to enter some data. So let's head over here to our approach phase. Get the latest weather. Go. All right, so 30 point. So we're going to put 30.10 in for the Q and H. Temperature 31, I believe it said. Yes. Wind zero eight zero diagonal zero three. I like this song too. I have this one and our chart. Let's bring that up again. Okay, and we are 40 miles out. it on down like it says 25,000 and then 10,000 7,000 as we work our way in set up for our descent here in the next oh, 20 30 miles I'll start us down this will limit us to 25,000 to Ducci and then as our charting uh, shows <clears throat> we'll stair step down to uh, 3,000 So here's that line of thunderstorms. Kind of blow this up a little bit for you so you can see them. We're about uh, right about here. Uh, hang on a second. As we're getting into this line of thunderstorms here and then we'll break out into where it should be pretty decent into Jacksonville. The shame our weather radar doesn't pick it up. I don't have active skies, so that's why. All right, so we'll pull that up. Let's go outside, take a look, see what we see.
Yeah, we'll look the other way. Looks like the top's early. Mostly ahead of us. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put us into our descent now. And with the dot, that means we're into a managed descent. And no approach. No, no uh, centers are up. And that green dot is what we want to stick between the two yellow lines here, folks. turn this down I think we might hear some of the weather outside Okay, it doesn't look like Mother Nature is talking too much to us out there.
lost a picture. I love that. I don't know where it went. Oh well, no big deal. Alright, so we're pulling away from the storms here. Let's see where we are to 25,000 feet. And we're doing good, so we'll set now for 10,000. And you can see now we'll get a little bit more. We got the constraints on, so you can see them here. Um, as we continue down to Form B, I believe it's called. Yeah, Form B. We got above 10,000, but below 13. Okay, so we'll pull that out of here. Now the goal again, like I said folks, is to stay right in between these two. That green dot, that's your speed and your cruise profile. Okay, I'm going to dial back a little bit on my ranges. And we're going to do one more, make sure we don't have ATC sneak up on us. There we go. Just getting through that line of storms. Got a little bit more ahead of us here. Then we'll be uh, setting up for the arrival. And that's because I forgot to turn top of descent off. Well, the 50, 50 mile pause that Mac Air's ACAR system has, I forgot to turn that off. So we're back on. That's why I couldn't find it. Eighteen thousand feet. All right. There we go. And thirty ten. We'll recheck that here as we get in a little closer. Do that right now. Uh, yeah, we crossed the top of the hour. 30.08. So 
still looking at 131 and 136. Let's update our FMC here. 30.08. And... Thirty-one, and we just try to keep that up to date, folks. Okay, coming in here to Jacksonville, still no sign of any centers or approach controllers up. Just the Atlanta one behind us. I am going to try, and I usually fail. getting anything out of Jacksonville. Normally I don't. Okay, so we're not. Okay. Here we come. Form B is about 10 miles out from us, and we are approaching 10,000 feet. Next descent level will be to 7,000. Somewhere between Kipple uh, and uh, Ortar will uh, go into approach mode. Right around Makka, M-A-H-K-A. -A. Gotta wonder where they come up with some of these uh, waypoints. Okay, checklist time. So we got our, uh, let's check our frequency here real quick, make sure that's correct. I see ZH and it's uh, 110.5 for 137. Okay. Uh, Q&H is set. Uh, Okay, let's go back to uh, perf. Ten thousand feet. Okay, there's our call for lights. Seatbelts are on. Okay, so 
medium. LS on. And we'll start with the flaps here shortly. Dial this down now to 20. Okay, here comes Kipple. Next up will be 5,000. Take over speed. Out of the clouds, we're aiming now for our arrival. Okay, we got the brake fan on ahead of time. All right, and Okay, and we're coming up on Maka, and then Orte is next, and that is our 3,000 foot mark, I believe. Yeah, 3,210. Descent while slowing. Okay, come down here, we'll grab the speed brakes. Everything's alive on the localizer and the glide slopes. So we're set up for the arrival. I'm going to let her get in a little closer. We're only. And we're going to go ahead and click into approach phase.
Okay, update our position. Just some scattered storms around the area, so we're in good shape there. Final checklist items. Brake fans are on spoilers. We'll arm as soon as we're slowed, and we are. Wait for the uh, localizer. Okay, folks, we're about to come in. Let's get the uh, approach lined up. Cap 3 single. We'll go dual. Even though I'm probably going to take over on the approach. Uh, we'll get the landing gear out once the glide slope is met. And uh, go around will be 3,000. Making sure here on the chart. Yep, 3,000. So, All right, folks. All checklist items are complete. Localizer has been achieved. Start looking out there for a runway as we start lining up. And start slowing down. Ooh, that was close to an overspeed. Ooh. Let's go ahead and set for 160 now. Gear down. About 10 miles out. Got the runway in sight, so we're good to go there. And the approach is 136. Gear down. Gear is down, flaps are at two. Going to three. And let's go flaps full. Make sure the spoilers are armed. Again, last check, we're on final brick fan. 2500. On spoilers armed flaps full go around altitude set glide slope achieved and we're on autopilot one and two runway in sight All right, folks, well, we're about to wrap this up here in the Sunshine State as we're coming into Jacksonville, Florida. Um, hope you all have enjoyed the stream up to date. Uh, we're uh, not sure yet about the second one. It's not a long flight, but uh, uh, we'll see what we can do once we get in. All right, so outer marker has just been crossed. 1,500 feet. Winds are a little shifty up here. That or we're going from a more fluid uh, atmospheric air to the, what the METAR is reading. It's hard to always tell with these weather programs. All right, folks, uh, we are now going to, yeah, we're going to go ahead and take over. One thousand. And we're slowing now to the approach speed. Kind of watching the Vassies. Approaching one, four.
500. Get over here a little bit. And we'll go ahead and call it stable. 400. 300. Landing. And for those curious, we'll be going to gate Charlie 4. 100. 100. 50. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Long landing. Long landing. 5,000 feet remaining. 5,000 remaining. Sorry about getting a little squirrely there. I don't know why the reverse didn't come out. Okay, the brake fans are at work, cooling one of the brakes. We're back into green. 262 feet a minute, folks, and it didn't look like anyone guessed, so. All right, well, we'll be coming off here, and we'll be taxiing to the terminal again, Charlie 4. And Jacksonville ground, uh, Mac Air 572 is off runway uh, one four. Taxi to the uh, to the gates. Roger November Romeo Gate C four. Mac Air 572. Okay, let's clean up here real quick. De-arm the spoilers, bring up the flaps. Just gonna kind of work my way up the panels here, folks. Turn the radar off. And let's see, working our way up here. GPU. Waiting for flap open. Go ahead and start taxing. There's flaps open. There we go. And again, uh, Tango to November to Romeo. Okay. Charlie 4 will be straight ahead. And again, folks, welcome to Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, in the Sunshine State. Glenn B. Gaming, welcome aboard. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Uh, we're going to try and put a second flight in the air. Uh... Once we get into the blocks here and go through the uh, usual show close, because I'd like to see that one as a spectator. Okay, and the APU is available, so we'll go ahead and bring the bleed on. All right. Get set up with the next checklist. Here's Romeo. 
Colonial. Oh, I didn't know cargo was this way as well. Um, take a look a little closer at that map, maybe. We'll see how the gates line up here with what my chart shows. Okay, oh, cargo is right over there. Okay. And what's okay? So they must have them at both ends. All right. Well, we're going to be peeling off here straight ahead, and then we're going to kind of work our way around. Y'all don't mind, I am going to get a bird's eye view. Alright, next gate's gonna be ours. All right, we are in the blocks, folks. Let's go ahead and get the wing lights. Oh, we're not. Stop. I said stop. I hate when it does that. Let's to tap the brakes. See how badly we went forward. Uh, not too bad. Okay, good. All right. So shutdown is pretty simple here. We've already got the bleed air on. Uh, throttles are at idle. And all we do, uh, let's get the, uh, since they're going to do it anyway. And we're going to go ahead and shut her down. Okay, go over here. All right, so seatbelt signs, engines are off. All right, and we're good there. Let's go up here, turn the fuel pumps off. Brake fan off. Call, well, we're not going to call the jetway. What we're going to do, let's first come off that sim. Get 
Get the flight taken care of with Mac Air. Pyrep ready. Okay. File Pyrep. Okay. I just like to check real quick. Once we have it checked, uh, we are going to roll the tape backwards. Take a look at that landing. Okay, that's... Uh, where are you? There you are, Charter. Today is the 25th approval pending. What we want to see. Oh, actually, I needed that later. Oh, well, we'll worry about that in the startup of the next section. All right. So, folks, as promised, let's head on back. Shall we? Now let's get some appropriate music for the end of the show. Again, the system said 226 feet a minute. We'll see how it looked here. Like I said, looks pretty stable there, doing pretty good. Okay, here we come over the uh, threshold for both runways. Well, it looks like we might have to call maintenance out for some new tires on the uh, steer. That wasn't too bad, folks. Let's go back out. That looks really bad when you're in high speed mode. That didn't look too bad that way. Let's take a look out the other wing, see what we see. Not sure why reverse thrust never happened, but that was a fun flight, though. All right, well, 
when we get back to the Allegiant flights, we will be flying out of Jacksonville back to Mid-America Airport. That's the uh, Allegiant motto. So let's take a look out of here from the best view in the house, the tower. Can't tell a bad landing from the tower. Look at that beautiful landing, folks. Granted, about 3,000 feet down the runway, but overall, not a bad landing. Folks, and not a bad flight on top of it. We want to thank you for flying with Mike. Um, it's getting close to 2.45 here. Um, we're going to go ahead and reset the sim here and uh, uh, set up for another uh, flight. This will be out of Alaska as we fire up the bush here. Bush series. Uh, no, we're not flying uh, flying bush racing cars. Uh, we're going to be flying in the bush up in Alaska as we start up Alaskan bush se uh, season number three. So, folks, uh, just want to say for those of you that uh, followed us up to this point, we want to say thank you very much. Uh, and uh, feel free to follow if you're so inclined or subscribe. We'd appreciate anything uh, that you can give to the stream at all. Folks, God bless. We uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Stay tuned. We're going to reset here in a moment for Flying Alaskan Bush. So for now, we'll see you shortly. For now, Goodbye and God bless.